we now have a mask that isolates assets of a level to render uniquely. The mask works with any post-process materials effects, but needs further controls to work with outlines. In this module, we'll set up the ability to expand the mask to incorporate outlines. Let's create a new post-process material that will isolate our outline effect to our characters. Let's select our PPMM underscore outlines post-process material, control C and control V to create a new one. Let's change the suffix from two to CH for character. Let's open our PPMM underscore base color underscore character, and let's select the mask that's isolating our characters and rendering the base color only on them. Let's copy the mask, minimize our material, open our newly created material. We see we have all of our polygon outlines and normal lines, and let's paste it near the root node. Let's move it underneath the line that's leading from the linear interpolate that's blending the polygons and the normal lines together. And let's create a new linear interpolate. Let's take the current linear interpolate and let's plug this into the B of the new linear interpolate. Let's plug the result into the emissive color and let's plug our mask into the alpha. We see we get an error because our custom depth and our scene depth are missing the masks that isolate the red channel. So let's create a component mask and let's isolate the red channel and let's add it after our custom depth. Let's take the mask, copy and paste it and add it after our scene depth mask. And now our error should go away. Let's save and let's copy our custom depth scene texture material expression and paste it by our lerp. And let's change the scene texture ID to post process input zero and add a mask to only include the red, green, and blue channels. And then let's plug that into the A of our new linear interpolate and save. Let's minimize our materials. Now back in our post-process volume, let's add another material to our blendable array. We'll select asset reference. We'll select our newly created outlines material and we'll apply it. And right away, we can see that we have lines that appear on our characters. Let's move this above the base color for organizational purposes, because technically the PPMM outlines will render above the PPMM base color. So if I go back into my material and I browse over to where we created our parameter to control the thickness of our polygon outline, which is gonna fall outside the mesh, and I set the value to five, I see that nothing happens to the silhouettes of our characters. If I look at the bridge of the boy's nose, I see there's a thick line there. If I go back to the same scalar parameter and I set it to one, and I look at the boy's nose, I can see the thick line is gone. If I set it back to five, I can see the thick line is back. The reason that this line is only showing up on the nose of the boy, it's also showing up a little bit on the armpit of the mannequin, but it's not showing up on the outside is because the mask that we've just pasted into our material and are using as our alpha to overlay on top of the effect is not moving in conjunction with the offset of our polygon outline. The way we need to fix this is we need to take the texture coordinates that are moving our scene depth lookup one pixel in the respective direction and we need to use the same shader code to drive an offset of both our custom depth and our scene depth. In order to demonstrate this, if I take my texture coordinate, my add, my multiply, my two vector, and my scene depth, not this additional multiply, if I copy those and I paste them over behind my newly created mask, let's take our mask and move it down a little bit in front of these UV controls, and now let's plug the result of the ad into both the custom depth UVs and the scene depth UVs. And let's plug the result into the emissive. Once we hit save, now we can see we have a mask of our characters on the environment. If I want to offset this mask up, I can use my two vectors, red and green parameters to offset it. If I want to offset it up further, I can change my green channel, which stores my V coordinate, to say 10 to get a drastic effect. If we hit save, 
we see a character mask moved up. If I set this to negative 10 and save, I can see the mask moves down. Let's set it back to one. What we need to do is we need to mimic what's happening with each polygon line. This one's moving one pixel up, this one's moving one pixel down, this one is moving one pixel to the left, and this one's moving one pixel to the right. We need to take this UV set of controls and we need to mimic what's happening here to our mask so that our mask expands in the same amount that our polygon outlines do. In order to do that, let's select all of the code that's being plugged into the UVs, including the parameter that we created to control our thickness. Let's copy that and let's paste it in an empty spot over near our new mask shader code. Let's delete the example UV shader code that we had just plugged into the UVs. We're gonna redo that over here, and then let's make a little bit of room to work. Let's take our shader code that's creating our mask for our characters and move it down in front of the first set of UVs and plug the add in. Now let's take that same shader code and copy and paste it once more. And then for our negative V offset, let's plug the add into both the UVs. Now let's copy and paste it once more. And for our left movement of the pixel, let's plug the result into our UVs. And once more again for the right movement. Now let's add these together. Let's remove this clamp that's being plugged into the alpha of the lerp by hitting Alt and left click. Let's also remove the connection to the emissive. And instead, let's plug this into the A of the add. And then let's plug this shader code into the B. Let's create another add for our left and right mask offset shader code. Let's plug them together. And now let's plug the result of both together. Let's take all of this, move it up a little closer to our master material node. Let's take our newly created lerp and post process input zero. Let's plug it in and let's take the add that is the result of our entire mask for our characters and let's plug this into the alpha. Let's minimize, and now let's hit save. Now I can see I have a line around my characters. To illustrate how this is working a little bit more clearly, let's move our material down and let's plug the result of our newly created expandable character mask directly into the emissive. Once we hit save now, we're gonna see we have a mask around the characters. Now if I go to my parameter that's controlling my polygon outline thickness and I increase or decrease it, the mask is going to increase or decrease with it as well. Let's set it to two. Let's plug the add back into the alpha of the lerp and let's plug the lerp back into the emissive and hit save. And now we can see we have an outline correctly being drawn around the silhouette of both characters. Now let's go back over to the sequence review. I can see once again, the outlines are not respecting the depth of field. If I want the outlines to render underneath the depth of field, if I go back into my material, to the root node, if I go back down to where the blendable location is set to before tone mapping, and I move this to before translucency, and I hit save, I can now see that the outlines will render correctly underneath the depth of field. We now have a post-process material that masks the effect of the outlines to only render on the characters. With the implementation of a few mask controls, we are now able to expand the mask the same distance as the polygon outline. The result is a correctly rendering outline effect on our characters. In the next modules of this course, we will examine a couple of ways to add graphic contrast to the level's lighting.